rainbow dash! Thomas is proud of his branch line, and so is Edward. But their track and bridges weren't strong as those on the main line. Sir Topham Hatt does not allow heavier mainline engines like Gordon or Henry to run over them. But one day, the way Gordon was talking, you would have thought Sir Topham Hatt had given that weight restriction order for another reason. It's not fair. Oh boy, here we go again. What isn't fair? Letting branch line diesels pull mainline trains. What are you saying, Big G? Boko isn't that bad. He's the first friendly diesel we've ever met. And my brother's handling him dandy so far. But the thought of seeing them on the mainline can make us bigger engines a laughing stock in all of Britain. Y'all certainly being one right now, building up a storm with your dumb complaining. Bah! Never mind, Gordon. I'm sure Boko will let you pull his truck sometimes. That would make it quite fair. Gordon spluttered in fury. I won't pull Boko's dirty trucks. I won't run on branch lines. Why not? It'll be a nice change. Sir Tubham Hutt would never approve. Branch lines are vulgar. Okay, you big mouth. That's enough. I don't care what you say about branch lines, but that's no reason to call them stupid. Big mouth. If you heard yourself, young lady, you'd be wise to shut up. I'm sticking to my point of view. And if you can't stand that, go play with little Thomas. Ugh. And I will make this clear right here and now. You'll never see me running over vulgar branch lines, and that is that. Gordon left in a huff. Edward and Applejack chuckled and followed him and Rainbow Dash to Nafford Station. Once a week on Friday evenings, the two blue engines ran two fast passenger trains from the station. Gordon and Rainbow Dash always leaves first at 6.25 p.m. with the evening run of the Wild Norwester bound for the main line to Vickerstown. Then Edward and Applejack follows five minutes later at 6.30 p.m. with a local stomping train bound for their branch line to Brendam Docks. Usually everything ran like clockwork, but tonight, trouble was in the air. A lady in a green floppy hat was saying goodbye to her husband. It was nearly time for Gordon to leave. Rainbow looked back toward the conductor near the brake coach and could have sworn she saw something green waving. All right, all right, we're going. Jeez, you don't have to be that desperate. She thought the conductor had waved his green flag. Then Gordon departed, leaving luggage, his passengers, and the conductor all standing on the platform. Everyone was very surprised and cross. But to make matters worse, by the time Rainbow stopped Gordon and brought him and his train back, 
Edward and Applejack were already running late with their train. So now they set off first. But the signalman at Knapford Junction wasn't told about the change. So by accident, he sent Edward and AJ along the main line to Vickerstown. Gordon and Rainbow were sent along the Brendan branch and arrived cold and cross on one of the sidings near the docks. <sighs> Next morning, Bill, Ben, Snips, and Snails poked into the yard. They wondered if Boko and Bigma had brought their cars yet, but there weren't any at the moment, but they didn't mind that. They thought teasing Gordon would be much better fun and a great way to pass the time. What's that over there, Ben? Shh, quiet, Bill. It's Gordon. It looks like Gordon, but it can't be. Eh, uh, are you sure? That looks like the same big number four on his call box thingy. If that's uh -huh. really big old Gordy, tell me one thing about him. Well, we know that Gordon never comes on branch lines. He thinks them vulgar. Gordon pretended he didn't notice the conversation. But if it isn't Gordon, he's just a part of all iron, which we better take it to Crossroads Scrap Yard right now. No, Bill, forget it. This is useless for scrap. We better take it to Nefford Harbor and dump it in the sun at sea. Cool. Suddenly, Gordon was alarmed. I am Gordon! Stop! Stop! When Boko and Big Mac suddenly arrived, Gordon thought they were the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. Boko, my dead engine, save me! Boko and Big Mac quickly seized up the situation and threatened to take away the coal cars he had brought for the twins and the colts. This made them behave better at once. Gordon thought Boko and Big Mac were wonderful. Those little demons! How do you do it? Oh well. It's nothing really. It's all part of the job. Right, Big Mac? Yup. Gordon still believes to this day that Boko and Big Mac saved his life, but we already know that the twins and the Colts were only teasing, weren't they? 